we have uh, a very dynamic speaker with us, Mr. Uh, Musa Zag Zagdud, if I say it properly, from uh, Alcatel Lucent, who's going to uh, share some interesting uh, experiences with us. So without further ado, Mr. Musa, please welcome him aboard. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm not the sex selling guy. Sorry for that. Uh, so I'm Musa, in charge of the cloud business division for Alcatel Lucent Enterprise Group. Very happy to be here uh, attending this event. This is the first time, but I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you our experience talking about CPaaS, our learnings, the challenges we have been going through, things that have succeeded and others uh, not. But before, let me just share with you some information about our company. Probably you don't know it well. Alcatel Lucent is a young startup which has celebrated its 100 years this month. So obviously I was not there at the beginning and probably not when it's going to stop. But you probably don't know that this company has uh, provided a lot of innovation that has changed our lives. And of course, this has gone through a lot of time with mergers, acquisitions, and technology uh, sharing. We have today, uh, today, we had 30 Nobel Prizes ha that have worked for that company. Probably you don't know that. And uh, main uh, inventions like transistors that you use in your chipset has been invented in this company. You have the CC++ language that has been invented in this company. Unix operating system and other things like that. So you can understand that we, are doing, we have been doing more than only telephony, even though we are more, mostly known now for doing uh, communication for enterprise. And we have been going through different transition and tra tra transformation phases, um, from the analog to the ISDN, from the ISDN to the SIP, the SIP from WebRTC, and everything related to the cloud. But the most important transformation that we are going through right now is about digital transformation, just because it is more than only technical. It is about behavior, it is about mindset, money, technology, and everything. And the thing is that I've been, I was been visiting many customers, and each time I was asking the question about digital transformation, I have always the same average reaction, which looks like to be this one. Look at this guy. He looks self-confident, intelligent, and knows everything, right? Of course, it's not, the, it's not the case. What I'm trying to say here is that our job is just to make and to, stuff, to stay far from this, this phase, because these customers, and this is a very interesting times, where we all know each and every single customer, be it small or very large, knows that there is something to do with the digital transformation. The only thing is that they don't, don't, don't know exactly what to do. So this is a huge opportunity for us to guide them into the right way. So I would like to share with you some important tracks that we have been going through that have guided our strategy. And I'm not saying this is the path you have to go. I'm just sharing ours and the one we, we think is good. First of all, something very important about the, team, the time notion. We have been doing tools and solutions ourselves, but also others like Microsoft, Google, to tackle the productivity thing. Productivity is doing the maximum things in the minimum of time. So this advantage is towards the company. But there is something new that came from the consumer world, which is the management of the user impatience. This one is probably the most important one because we are addressing the user and this very specific need. I think we all experience that when you have an article and you see the link, you click on the link, if you wait more than two, three, five seconds, you just give up. And this is very important to take into account where the time becomes different and the time is more, more important than the features themselves, than the technical. That's the first thing. Second is about innovation. We're all talking about innovation, technical, and so on, which is good. But we think that uh, the innovation has to stop at the door of the complexity. Let me take two examples. If you look at Google Glass, a lot of uh, technology, innovation, and so on, but today, who cares? On the other side, you have WhatsApp. I'm not advising, advertising here, but just an example. Uh, it is a simple instant message. Of course, we have some video and so on, but at the beginning, it was that. And they have, they're claiming 1.6 billion of users. Why? Because when you install, 
you use. You don't bother yourself trying to understand how it works, creating your network, or reading any, uh, any user guide. You just install and use. And this one is interesting because we have a lot of people in the world that are, are using WhatsApp without even knowing how to write, without any education. That's important. Third thing, everyone is talking about natural language processing, bots, artificial intelligence, user experience. And we do. This is at the core of our, our business. And here I've put user experience. But again, something that is also new is that we're talking about user-centric or user experience as if we had only one profile of people with the same age, the same relation to the technology, the same patience, same intelligence. It's not the case. That's why our solutions have to be human-centric with a human experience more than a user-centric, which, which is a very generic world. As an example, what we do is that in our current solutions, the PBX solution that we are, we have, uh, we are selling since years now, sometimes we have 5,000 of features. But at the end of the day, we are using five of them. So what we say here with a new approach on the cloud, CPaaS, UCAS, is only to concentrate on 20% of services that we know will be used 80% of time. So it's important to figure out this shift between the user centricity to the human centricity in order to have the right path. How Alcatel Lucent, as an example, and this is again our experience, our managing this digital transformation, we are figuring out that we need to go through these three main pillars. First of all, if we want to succeed, we have to take into account an existing situation of our customers. This means that we cannot ask our customers to come and throw everything away that they have. The existing equipment has to be taken into account, be it terminals, be it PBXs, be it applications, or whatever. I can give you one example, and this is the aim of our transformation. We have today more than 800,000 of customers using our solutions, which means more than 60 million of users. And we have calculated that we have one billion of calls a day of people using our solutions. We cannot give that up. We have to transform that pace. We have to take into account this ecosystem and bring it to the transformation, to the cloud, to the UC, to the collaboration, and so on and so forth. So existing equipment, existing situation is, also, of course, very important. Second, be able to manage new things new trends, like artificial intelligence, bots, IoT, big data. Why? Just because we're bringing more services. We're bringing more, uh, we enrich the solution. So we have to be able to take that into account, and this is what we are doing. But third, if you don't have the third one, you, don't, you cannot uh, succeed, is being able to manage the threats that are coming with these new things, like data leaks, uh, security, data privacy, everything related to this security feeling. So these three things have to be to taken into account. And in our experience, again, if we do not go through these three ones, we are missing something. Some customers will say to us, hey, you don't take it into account our existing systems, we are not interested. Some of others say, OK, but how, is, how will the data will be managed? Are you sure that you will provide the right level of security and privacy and so on? So we have to manage these three things. And at the end of the day, this business, this cloud business, be it UCAS or CPaaS, is going with trust. And trust is something that is very human-centric, right? Um, trust, why? Because if I'm a customer, I would like to save my investment. I don't want you to tell me that I have to throw everything, everything away. Second, I would like to trust the solution in terms of security, confidence, confidentiality, and so on. This is, by the way, where the IP-centric has failed in the past. So our uh, solution to that, our answer to that, is we have uh, built five years ago a cloud solution that is named Rainbow, uh, which is both UCAS and CPaaS, and I'm not going to talk technical here, I'm just sharing with you our experience again. But for us, whatever the system we are talking about, whatever the services, at the end of the day, the CPaaS platform has to be, at the end, a relationship machine, putting together people it could be people from the company, from outside the company, it could be customers, it could be suppliers, people, humans. Then machines together. The machines, again, it could be IoT, it could be existing PBXs or whatever machines or objects. And processes. And again, this is where the CPaaS is relevant. Processes means, it, bless you, 
these existing applications in the company so that we come and integrate with those existing uh, applications because if you are in your daily job, we don't want you to jump into another application. We want you to stay in your uh, METI application and use the services thanks to these APIs and CPaaS. So, relation machine is simple. From a technical point of view, it is identities, put them together into a core, a machine that is scalable to millions of users, and put services within this relationship. So that this platform has to be thought as a long-term platform. Again, this is money, this is research, this is resources. So we have to think long-term. That's why whatever the, the services you think, think about now or tomorrow, it will be the same mapping. And if you find only one service that is not fitting this, I will owe you a beer. Hopefully there will not be a lot of reiners there. But we are, conf we are confident that this will be, this is already today something uh, that is going to be stable. Contextual, why contextual? An example, if I take, I'm taking my phone and calling you, for example, all what network will bring to you is my phone number. There is nothing else. With these kind of technologies, we're going to provide my, I'm going to provide my identity through the flow so that you know who's calling you. So you pick up the call because you see my picture, my uh, whatever, my activity, my company. But still, you will take the call. It could be an, a voice call, a video call, or whatever. You take the call, whether because you have time or because I'm sympathetic to you, whatever. You don't have any further information. With this type of things, technology, what we do, is just before calling you, I'm just going to indicate the object of the call so that when you receive the call, first of all, you see my picture and my activity and my identity, and at the same time, you will see why I'm trying to call you. This is, this is the contextual com conversations. Then once we have the platform, once we know, we put it in place, we have to be relevant. And this is a very important word to me, relevance is key. You cannot just come and play like others, otherwise you'll be compared. And once you be compared, you have to be better all the time, which is the case, but still we have to be relevant. The relevance in our case, and again, I'm, I'm sharing my, our experience, is uh, about providing what we call verticals. So the CPaaS platform help us verticalizing our offers so that we can be relevant towards healthcare business, hospitality, government, education, and so on and so forth. So this is very important, and coming back to this, to be relevant, you can be relevant toward the user, and I was mentioning it, meaning that you have to come up with something that is really showing benefit from a user standpoint without having the user to think about how the solution is working. And from a company standpoint, it's very simple. Does the company help me earning money or help me preventing from losing money? That's as simple as that. And the beauty of those systems is that whatever the vertical you're talking about, it could be healthcare, let's take the example of healthcare, the aim of the usage and the need is that the hospital has to keep the link between the hospital and the patients. If you take the government, it's about keeping the link between the administration and the citizens. If you take the hospitality, the hotel, is keeping the link between the hotel and the guests. It's always the same thing, and, and then we can inject services to be relevant. I'm looking at the, at the time at the same time. So concrete examples that we have put in place thanks to our CPAS platform on real businesses. Take the port of the future. The Docker here means port, because it's a French name, and it's not the Docker technology that probably you have thought about. Forget about the technology, this is port. What is the use case? The use case is we have sensors on those containers. If someone is trying to open the door, the sensor will send a message to the platform, and thanks to artificial intelligence, we're gonna figure out if this is something normal or not. If there is a maintenance there, we will figure out that it's okay. If there is no one there, then we'll send a message, and the real use case that we are working on is that the platform will ask a drone to take off and to go see what's going on, take a picture, and come back. So this is the reality of today. And it's simple, why? Because as it is very straight, you know, the containers are straight, it's simple to make a drone take off, go on, on a given uh, position, and come back. It's not asking it to go in the, in the city or whatever. Second, <coughs> airplane traffic improvement. The CPAS platform helping right now today companies, one company at least, uh, managing better the takeoff and landing. Each time there is a, f a plane landing or taking off, we create, thanks to the CPAS, an automated 
environment which is called a bubble, that's just kind of group of people. And then we put there people that are relevant towards that action, and we allow them to discuss together. And again, we are talking about contextual conversations because once we create that automated bubble, we're gonna push that information that are contextual to that flight so that people know what they are talking about. And then a technology thing is that we were mentioning this just up before, where the WebRTC is, is relevant. To our opinion, the WebRTC is becoming relevant as soon as it could interface with other protocols. So that, as a user, if I have my UC plat uh, uh, interface, I can use WebRTC. But if I have a, a fixed phone, or mobile, or a deck, I don't have WebRTC. So we have to have systems that are doing the interface between WebRTC and legacy type of protocols. This is where the value is. Hospitality, simple thing. I was in China in a hotel, I wanted to have an iron. Simple thing, an iron in the morning. I take my phone, my, my phone, I, first of all, I had to look at the, which thing I have to push to call the, the desk, and then I had the desk, and the lady was not speaking English, and probably my English was poor. I spent half an hour trying to explain that I want an iron, right? So, the thing is that what we do as a solution for hospitality is that once I pick up the call, I take my phone, I just say in French, because I'm French, je veux un fer à repasser, which means I'd like to have an iron. Then, talking to a bot that will take that message from me, transform it into Chinese to the desk, so that the desk will bring me the, the iron. That's as simple as that. And here we are gaining probably 25 minutes, coming back to the time management, which is key. University in Indonesia. Imagine that you are students, you come in the room, we display a QR code, you just flash code with your mobile and we know that you are here, so we know who's there. For security reasons, we know how to manage if there's too many people, th things like that. This is where the CPaaS platform is today used on our side. Where the value is? I'm saying to the teams that if what we do is not matching with these three values, we don't do it. First of all, time management, I'm insisting on that. Each thing we do has to provide our customers with, gain, uh, with gaining time, first of all. Se second, is data integrity. We have to make values on the data and its integrity. Simple example, in France we have lawyers that record each and every conversation. So what we are working on is that each conversation will be stored, transcripted into text, and then stored, so that we can do research there. Security feeling is also a value where we see a lot of business and opportunities. So as soon as we are doing something, again, it's on our side, it has to obey to these three things, or probably three of them. And again here, you can take whatever service that you think has value, it will obey to that one. Otherwise, they will pay a beer. Business model, sorry. Business model. Today on AP, on our side, still five minutes remaining, we have three business models. Of course, we can count the number of APIs that we are using. If you're talking with a hotel, you, you can count the number of interactions you have with the platform. Or identity subscription, why I'm talking about identity, it's just because the identity could be humans, but could be also drones, machines, IOTs, and so on. So we can count the number of identities that are using the platform without any limits. And third, consultancy selling, we can accompany our customers in integrating, in developing, and make it happen. Data management is key, as you know. We cannot provide something where we have any risk, where we know that data is not stored, is not recorded, is not encrypted, right? So that's, that's important. By the way, it has to be compliant with the regulation, be it GDPR or whatever. Data integrity, this is more technical, where we have to make sure that it's stored, redundant, and always available. And the data is the customer's ownership. This is important, and we see in the market a lot of opposite examples where we say that your data is yours, and then we use it for whatever adver advertising. So this is important. And this brings to me to the challenge we had. The Alcatel Lucent platform is a cloud, cloud platform, and it's wide, worldwide deployed. We have data centers in 80 areas, as you can see on this, and the challenge was, how we can provide a worldwide solution allowing people and, and objects communicating together, including from different continents, but still contain the data in each country. I'm in France, oops. I'm in France, the data has to remain in France, but still I can communicate to people in US, in China, and so on. So it has been a very important uh, challenge for us, which we have overcome thanks to this technology and approach. 
Once we're talking CPaaS, we have to talk about community developers. So this is also the challenge we have been facing. So the platform today is available for any of the developers for free. Just go and register, and you have all the automated facilities, like you have your account, documentation, SDKs, uh, you know, sandboxes, and so on. And we provide a digital um, support because it has to be scalable, right? Then we have some customers that say, your platform is good, but I don't have any developers. Can you do it for me? Then what we do is that we have built all the shelf solutions so that anyone can come and use it from a store that is going to be uh, uh, issued in Q3 this year. And by the way, the store, it could be ours, but it could be also our partners, like, like, like what we do with IBM, where Alcatel Lucent, um, let's say, uh, APIs are available also in another uh, platform, which is, uh, which is IBM's one. Then we have to connect to specific platform. Today, today as I was mentioning, we have very large uh, partnership and alliances with Samsung and IBM and others, but those two are the ones that we have uh, issued uh, last year with great partnership on both technical business and, and go to market. And large projects we also have with governments, universities, big hospitals, and also the, the hotel chain I was mentioning in China, which is a real use case. For this, we're providing consultancy. So we have to go through these four things if we want to be relevant and, uh, and succeed. But if, if you have everything there, you have something remaining, and this will be my last slide because I will be half still one minute. It is about providing the best support as you can. And obviously, I'm not saying that this is what we do, right? Sometimes we're still struggling a little bit. But once we have a platform, APIs, CPaaS interactions, we have to have the best support and we have to spend time. And we are improving that in the company, but I think it's the same for you. And I like this image because, first of all, it's symbolizing somehow the help, and because I know that in our businesses we kind of remained great kids. Thank you very much. I'm on time, by the way, right? Fantastic. <laughs>